So we're going to talk a little bit about rheumatic fever. And this is typically a little bit of a confusing topic just because of the chronology of things. However, not to worry, um, we can just kind of lay things out very intuitively so we kind of can wrap our heads around what is going on here. The important thing to keep in mind is that acute rheumatic fever is not in response directly to a bacterial infection, but rather it's an immunological process that occurs after an infection. And the, the causal infection that precedes, precedes everything is uh, Streptococcus pyogenes infection, uh, typically thought of as strep throat, that will first occur in the patient and then about two to three weeks later, a small fraction of individuals can develop this rheumatic fever. Essentially what ends up happening is that during the course of the strep throat, the patient will develop antibodies against the causal pathogen, which are effective in fighting off the infection However, these antibodies will cross-react with other tissues in the body, including the heart. So it's important to appreciate that acute rheumatic fever is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction where the antibodies that were initially made to fight off the strep infection are now targeting the heart. And they really can target all parts of the heart uh, the valves ca causing endocarditis, the pericardium, and also the myocardium. And there are a few different ways that we can kind of clinically evaluate the physical findings of rheumatic fever that are, are in the page below. But really for our purposes, we'll just focus on the heart um, just to keep things simple and, and appreciate that because the valves can become inflamed, we can hear murmurs on our cardiac exam. And this is oftentimes one of the, the first things that uh, we can notice, and it really helps us kind of contextualize what is going on. And to just think about kind of an abridged diagnostic pathway, we will see some skin findings, we will detect our murmurs on our cardiac exam, and then when we order lab tests, we'll confirm that there was a past infection, a strep infection, by looking at the serology and looking at anti-streptolysis and antibodies. And all, all of that together will give us enough confidence to order something like an echo for the heart, where we can kind of confirm the pathophysiology behind the murmurs we're seeing. For, for example, one of the most common types of murmurs that rheumatic fever can cause is mitral stenosis and then also possibly uh, a mitral valve prolapse and that can be seen on uh, the echo for the heart and then essentially moving forward we can treat uh, this condition by using penicillin and really rheumatic fever doesn't occur unless we have an untreated strep throat so especially for patients that have a history of rheumatic fever, whenever they get strep throat again, it's very, very important to immediately put them on some antibiotics like penicillin to prevent this from happening again because the rate of relapse is very, very high.